So I finally finished Netflix's new documentary, American Murder, about Chris Watts, the husband and father who, in 2018, killed his entire family. It was really well done and super disturbing. If you like sleeping at night, I would tell you to watch anything else. But if you want to learn about Chris and what happened, I think it's a really great, really well done documentary. Pop Psych, and here's why. It stands for popular psychology, and through YouTube, I will become popular, and I'll be a popular psychologist. I'm David Colarossi. No, it's Dr. David Colarossi. I have a master's degree in marriage and family therapy and a PhD in counseling psychology. You are such a genius. So first of all, Chris Watts was absolutely mentally ill. And I can't diagnose him, I've not met with him. I really don't have a comprehensive picture, I just have the footage shown in that documentary. But I can tell you he has a disastrous cocktail of narcissism, antisocial personality, and borderline personality. And those three together, I think, led to this behavior. So before I break down that diagnosis, what I would describe as the access B, personality disorders, I want to talk about the idea of him being on the autism spectrum. If you look online, people are saying he's stoic, he's reserved, he's not connecting to people. Maybe this is part of what led him to kill his family. And I don't know if he's autistic. I don't know enough about him to make that kind of a diagnosis. I think it's absolutely possible. I also know that there is no way that that diagnosis is a part of him killing everybody that he loves, right? We have to separate the two, and I think it's dangerous to say, oh, well, he can't connect, and so therefore he kills people, right? Being autistic may make it harder for you to create close connections, but people that struggle in that area work on that. They want to create closer relationships. I would even argue anecdotally that they are sweeter in the efforts they make to create relationships. It doesn't make you murderous. So put the autism aside. The idea that this man killed his wife and then put her body in the back of a truck, loaded that truck with his two daughters who were alive, and drove for 45 minutes before deciding to kill both of them, definitely puts him in the antisocial bucket, right? That's there's sort of a Dexter-like vibe to that, unquestionably. But beyond the antisocial piece, there's a component of Chris which is very impulsive. And that's why I said the diagnosis of borderline may fit as well, right? Chris went from being in a loving, a supposedly loving marriage in June or July, meets a mistress, and then by August is ready to kill his wife. The all on, all off behavior is very much part of that borderline profile. But the component of his personality that I find most interesting and most impactful is his narcissism. That's why I think this ended in murder. I think that he was so self-interested that he didn't see any other option than eliminating his family. Throughout the documentary, we see evidence of Shanann, his wife, trying to get him to support her emotionally and even physically, and he's unwilling to do so. And I think the average viewer might look at it and go, well, maybe he doesn't see it, or maybe he's unable to be available because of maybe that autism diagnosis. But I don't think that's accurate because he was available to her early on in their relationship, and he's certainly emotionally available to his mistress. I think he's so invested in his relationship with his mistress that he doesn't see the need to take care of his wife. It's not that he's trying to be mean to her, he just doesn't care because he cares about himself and what makes him feel good in the moment. So I think we have to separate the ability to maintain a relationship and the desire to maintain a relationship. Chris can create relationships, he can maintain relationships, if he's invested in them, because then it's about him. So in aggregate, here's what I think happened. I think Chris was in a relationship with a wife, Shanann, who had been in a horrible relationship before him, had health issues, had a low self-esteem, and who desperately wanted the relationship to work. So she did everything she could to make him feel good, right? She praised the narcissist. She's on Facebook saying he's the man of her dreams. She's, he's a perfect husband. He, and I think he liked that praise. When he fell in love with somebody else, right, that he had that impulsive streak in him to fall for another person, his focus shifted off of Shanann and went to somebody else. And when he made the decision to kill his family, I think the thought process probably was, how do I get out of this without looking bad? I don't want the narcissistic injury of people thinking I'm a bad husband or that I've abandoned my kids, right? That's why he didn't just move out, head to Mexico or whatever. I think he killed them because he thought, 
I can kill them and people will think, poor Chris, and I'll be the one who is praised. I'll be the one who is supported. I think that's how he got himself there. And to get there, you got to have a whole lot of antisocial, a whole lot of borderline, and a whole lot of narcissism. So that's my analysis. I am curious. I know there's a lot of people online talking about it. I'm, I would love for you to tell me in the comments what you think. Do you see something else?